right, guys. Welcome back to this episode of the Bass Hole Podcast, and more especially Timberwolves Talk. I'm Chris. And I'm Peyton. And, and uh, yeah, we're going to get into a lot of things today. There's a lot to uh, unpack after that Indiana Pacers game last night. And the Lakers um, but, game. Both of them. And the Lakers game, yeah. Um, but we also have a special guest um, coming in at 12.15, so... Some of you in the comment section may know this person. We'll leave we'll leave it up to a secret for now. But yeah, what you uh, what did you think of the game last night, Peyton? Well, first of all, before we get into that, I just want to say uh, we're now on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. So if you want to check us out there, we usually get the episode out about two hours before you can get it on YouTube. So if you don't want to look at our faces and you just want to hear our lovely voices, that's where you can hear it. But um, you know what? After the game last night, I was I was very disgruntled. I um I was contemplating even being a Timberwolves fan. It was just it's just the heartbreak, and it's it's not the act the actual heartbreak. It's the way that we got heartbroken last night. Just how close that jump shot was to going in is just like we're literally like I saw a snapshot of the jump shot, and it was mm-hmm. literally if you saw a picture of that you're like there's a hundred percent chance that ball goes in. Yeah. Most of the ball was in the basket from the still shots I saw after the game. Um, yeah. I wasn't surprised, honestly, about the outcome. Um, we were up by 10 with seven minutes left. Um, so what Ryan usually does, is he'll keep the keep the starters out until like six or five minutes left. And uh, yeah, we gave up the 10. We gave up a run. Um, 10 point lead was diminished just like that. And finally, Ryan put the starters in. But it's it's like this every game um, that we have a 10 point lead. Like I I'd say there's about nine games this year that we could have won with better uh, time management, better clutch time and, you know, just better coaching in general. So, you know, I, I, I knew that lead was going to get given up. It, it always does in the fourth. Yeah. It was, um, it's tough going into, it's tough when you have a lead in the fourth quarter with like 10 minutes left, a 10 point lead. And you just know you're going to lose the game. Like how, what world are you living in? And yeah, I mean, so I want to touch on that Anthony Edwards shot. Cause you look at the angles, you look like, wow, that was, that was such a close shot to going in. But when you really dive deeper into that shot and the play, I feel like that was just not the right shot. And it was a, it was a terrible decision. It, I wouldn't opinion. say terrible. I just, it, it wasn't the best situation. And maybe See, if we're talking the Lakers game, Maybe that was a good shot because Ant was on yeah. fire. He had five threes yeah. in that game, I think. He did. He did five threes. But when he hadn't made a three yet, it just doesn't make much sense when you have the leading shot blocker in the NBA on you on a pick and roll with Cat. So think about it like this. If the leading shot blocker in the whole league is out on the three-point line on Anthony Edwards, who's guarding Cat? Probably Brogdon. I, I, th- I think I actually – I. I didn't see the exact play because I was a little frustrated from it, but there's a couple of reasons why that was not the play. Mm-hmm. First of all, Anthony Edwards, you know, love the dude. Like he's finally breaking out of his shell, but he, he was shooting bad today. He, he, he had a bad game. So obviously I don't think you want to go to him right there in clutch time. Second of all, I, I like the pick and roll, um, but you Let's need to feed that ball on the cat. You need to feed the ball on the cat and, cat either goes up with it or kicks it out to Malik and that's your shot or a, even an, an open ant. Um, and it's just, I, I didn't, I don't know. I don't know why he took a fade away to the right shot as well. I don't know why, obviously miles Turner was on him, but he could have did a little step back or something, but it seems like he just forced a kind of just a leaning shot to the right. Obviously it was, it was a good shot. Um, it shot wise, it it, it was a good shot. Like he, he looked well. got good rotation on it. It, it hit the back of the rim and it just didn't go in. And you know, that exact moment, the pessimistic Timberwolves fan came out in me. I said, well, we just lost the game. Like I, after he missed that shot, I, I, I knew it. I knew we were not going to close that thing out in overtime because the Pacers, I think are six and one in overtime now this year. Yeah. They, uh, we couldn't stop them. They scored, I don't know the exact stat, but it felt like they scored every single time down the court. Like we just couldn't stop them, whether it was Sabonis or Brogdon, it just seemed like they consistently could just get a bucket anytime. And the problem with the Timberwolves is we can't do that. We go on these little runs here and there, but we just can't consistently get a bucket. And yeah. the, the we last can't thing stop I want, a bucket. Like that's stop a bucket. The last thing I want to touch on on that Anthony Edwards shot. This is I guess for me what I wanted to see was I wanted to see Ant get going downhill. Cuz once he starts going downhill and gets to the rim, then you put the refs in a situation. Are you going to call a foul? Cuz 
if you if there's gonna be a situation like that, I feel like that like that's just the best chance you have is getting fouled at the rim, especially with the way Ant has been getting fouled lately. Like, I feel like that's just that would have been a much yeah, better. Yeah, it's situation. it's just too bad that that was such a good game in the fourth. Like as from a from outs, obviously as a Timberwolves fan, we were all very frustrated, but such a good such a good game from an outsider's fan perspective. And like it just ends on a play where I, it just doesn't fit any of Anthony Edwards' strong suits. Yeah. So like, it, the way Malik and Cat were shooting, I just didn't know how they uh, how they didn't take the last shot. But that's just my opinion. No, if it if it was the Lakers game, um, and we needed that shot, I would 100% give Ant free reign to do whatever he wanted, and I would be fine if he exactly did that because he was cooking that game. But it's you know you gotta if you're three for fifteen, you, I don't I don't know I don't love that shot. Yeah, but we do – honestly, I do love the confidence there, and, like, that's what I love about Ant. Like, the fact yeah. that he's willing to take that shot as a rookie game winner. Are you kidding me? Like, come yeah, on. that's like, awesome. That's what you love to see in your player. He's going to get better. He's going to get smarter. But um, leading up to that shot is actually a play that I think is kind of getting overlooked, but I think Rubio's fadeaway in the, in the paint. I think that play right there. That lost us a possession and honestly could have lost us the game. Like you, we were up by, I, we were up by two at that point, right? Yep. We we're up by two at that point. Um, fourteen seconds left in the shot clock. Rubio takes a fadeaway jumper from the elbow when we could have just dished it out and ran some more pick and roll at the top. And just, he obviously didn't make it because he never makes those shots. <laughs> not not taking anything, not taking anything away from Rubio because you know he had a he had a great game last night, twenty and thirteen. That's that's like prime Ricky Rubio, but you can't take that shot with that much time left in the shot clock. Yeah, it just doesn't. It I was I was just like, what? Like, why why would you shoot that shot? It didn't make any sense, and it was just like, no. you should. We could have got we could have pulled it back out, ran a high pick and roll, and may, if he was feeling it, sure he could have got a shot. But like, I feel like he could have just got a better shot in that situation. And maybe if the shot clock is winding down and there's about three seconds left on the shot clock, fine. That's an okay shot because you had yeah. to shoot it, but he didn't have to shoot it there. And right there, that's when I knew I'm like, well, shit, there you go. They're going to go up. They're going to go down, tie it up. And that's just the, that was the tough part was just like the cat Ricky Rubio pick and roll was working so well. And like he made the, he was making most of the right decisions. He only turned it over a few times, but it just stinks. Like crunch time, he makes the wrong decision. And he doesn't pass out. Like cat wasn't open on the, uh, the pop to the top of the key. They switched it well. But I think there was some double team help from Miles Turner. And at that point, you just got to kick it out, kick it out to Malik. And I'd rather have a Malik Beasley contested three in the corner than a Ricky Rubio fading elbow jumper. I'd rather have a Chris Jansen fading elbow jumper than a Ricky <laughs> Rubio fading elbow jumper. Those shots just don't go in. Yeah, but another thing about Rubio is I I think that um Cat, like, same with Anthony Edwards, I think that Cat is open on the pop more than they – um than they recognize. I feel like so many times when they get going downhill, if they were just to kick it back, like that one time when Rubio like did that behind the head pass, mm. I feel like that's open so much more than they, um, than they realize yet. And I feel like that's what they'll see in film and then like, they can capitalize off that more. But I think cat should be getting more threes. Yeah. I mean, that. it was, it, I, it was, uh, I don't know the exact play, but the behind the back, like Ricky Rubio pass, um, Cat was so open because they they both took Rubio in the paint. First of all, Pacers like you're gonna take you're gonna double team Ricky Rubio in the paint. You should you should leave him open in the paint. Yeah, but you want him shooting that. They left Cat so wide open at the top of the key that he pump faked and he pump faked the air. I don't know if you saw that. He pump faked the air and then shot three and made it. Like yeah, it, he wasn't expecting to be that wide open. And he like Peyton said, he is he is open a lot of the time on the key. It's just whether or not he wants to shoot it. And I love, I love the cat cat's pump fake is one of the most underrated pump fakes in the NBA. Cause everyone thinks he's shooting that three and then he just drives yeah. and he's a great playmaker with the ball too. He's one of the best passing big men. So it's, it's really nice to get the ball to cat at the top of the key one-on-one. -on -one. So, I mean, any situation where you can do that, you, you do it. Yeah. And I think that'll just get better with time, but it's really promising seeing that. Wow. Our 40% three point shooting big can get a three on at almost any possession. And if he doesn't, he can drive and get a bucket. And, yeah. But yeah, besides that mistake by Rubio, I I really loved what I saw from him. There's um there was another play where he um 
he uh, denied the screen. So he didn't use the screen. He went left. He was on like the left side. Going, he was driving to the left corner, got doubled by Miles Turner and found Cat. Like that's just that's the way basketball is supposed to be played. And I, that's yeah. what I love about Rubio sometimes. Like he he knows what he's doing. Yeah. Um, I guess overtime. Well, we don't really need to talk about overtime. That was just the Pacers did not miss a shot and we went cold at the wrong time. So, I mean, that's that it happens. But the one thing I did notice that was happening the entire game and games prior, I mean, it's been happening all year is it seems like Ant and Malik always go under the screen, especially to, I don't know if, if you guys were watching closely, Malcolm Brogdon is like one of my favorite players in the NBA. He's, so underrated um oh, it's, it's cr- underrated he is criminally underrated yes. the guy does not miss he's one of the best defenders in the league he's a very smart player they let they left him wide open and of course he's going to hit the dagger shot he's he has an open three if you give an nba player an open three i don't care who it is most more times than not they're going to nail that shot especially when you're hot like i think what do you think the percent chance was malcolm brogdon was going to hit that shot it had to have been 90s well he was four for five at that point so that's 80 percent like there's no way he's missing that wide open shot in crunch time when he's already in rhythm. It's just he's such a solid player. He's a great. Player. He is. He is a great player. You, you know, need a player the, like him. He's like Ricky Rubio, but just better. He's what Ricky Rubio strives to be. Yeah, I mean, I, a good three point shooter, great passer, great defender. Like, there's no weakness really in Malcolm Brogdon's game. No noticeable weakness. No. And that's what you know. That's what's so like good about that Pacers organization is they just. We were just kind of saying it off camera, like Sabonis and Malcolm Brogdon aren't the biggest names, like, but That's why they're so good though. They're so good, like, and you, you have Doug McDermott and Jeremy Lamb, who on any other team are just like players you don't even notice, but when they're on the Pacers, they they make the most of them. Like Jeremy Lamb is the leading three point percentage shooter in the NBA right now, which is crazy. So you know, props to the Pacers. They're they're a really good organization, and if you if you got drafted the Pacers, I think you'd have a successful a successful career win oh, yeah. win percentage they, wise. Plus, they got Levert, right? Yeah, Levert. I mean, yeah. like obviously he's not playing right now, but it, that's going to be a scary team in the next coming years. Maybe if they get a free agent too. Yeah, I think the smartest thing they could have done was get rid of Olin Depot. Olin Depot. I agree. I, I think that he just. I don't know if a superstar could ever thrive in in uh in Indiana though. That's what yeah, I, there's such I, a team. There's such there's such a team oriented team. Like they they move the ball really well. They play. I don't know. Like what when, when they went into that two three zone for the span of like twelve them. from the beginning of the fourth to like the six minutes against our bench. Who obviously our bench can't shoot that well. I their defense was locked down. I didn't. They, the Timberwolves got no open looks, and that's just the way Indiana plays plays defense. Like yeah, that's what think- you expect out of an Indiana team. I think uh, people can drop a comment below if they agree, but I think Indiana is kind of like, they feel like a college team. Like it just, when you see NBA players, like most sometimes with our, like it just doesn't seem like they're giving it their all, but like that team, they're just all bought into the system. And like what you notice is they get the ball up the court so fast. So Very many, good fast break team. Yeah. And that's just, you don't really see that in the NBA anymore. Like they, they, they always have a rim runner. They're just, and they they have Mister Inside, which uh, Jimmy Pete was. He was big. He was he was talking about that a lot. He liked yeah. that he called Sabonis Mister Inside, which it, like I guess, Sabo- I guess Sabonis man, like he was an All Star last year, uh, but he was the last pick in the, uh, in, the draft. in the All Star draft. But like, man, that dude does not miss on the inside. Oh, he's the lefty. Ta- the lefty hook, hook is like, like hook incredible. Like I used to have a lefty hook just like that. Like you just you couldn't stop it. I even cat like he gets the ball in the post, he's getting fouled or he's making it. He doesn't miss. Yeah. It's 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 incredible what Sabonis did actually. He scored 37. He had 17 rebounds, which I didn't even notice that he was rebounding that well. And he had a, he had 10 assists. Like he had a 37 point triple double. Like doesn't make any sense. And, I'm you know, a- it's it's what it, it's what it is. I I was I was actually having a little fun, you know, watching him and Brogdon play because they're very talented. Yeah, dude, that was a like, I I hate to say it, but that was one of the best games I've like I I'm, I guess I've just gotten to the point where like even if we lose, I'm still looking at trying to find all the positives. But like, I, there's not much negatives that I can bring away from that game. Like no. you have J Mac and freaking um, Nas Reed. Like that. What pairing, a lineup. 
like dude that's literally little rubio and little cat like they were just they looked so good together i think um j mac had six assists to nas reed at one point i don't know what he finished with but like they just looked so good yeah like, they, they really did in the first half i mean nas finished with what 14 yeah like he's yeah, one cool. of our leading see i think he was the leading scorer so i mean guys like the reason to be optimistic about this team is we're playing some of the this in this little four game stretch with the Clippers, Lakers, Raptors, and Pacers, those are four of the top teams in the NBA. And we, we competed with every single one of those teams. We so haven't like outmatched once. No, and like, you know, what what are you gonna do when LeBron James takes over? What are you gonna do when the Pacers play team defense like that? You know, it's just that's just who they are, and that's just you have to live with that at some points. Well, especially this year, but I'm saying next year, I don't think I think Next year, our team is just going to be so much better than this year. And but it could, could be a product of just being so young. Like these well, guys are so young. Is. Like Jay, dude, Big Mac with the first start last night. What do you think about that? You know, Malik, Malik late to shoot around, and like, I, do, you guys might have saw, might have um, seen our Darren Wolfson interview, and he said Malik should come off the bench, which I don't think me or Peyton agree with at all. But you know, it that. Honestly, it, it looks kind of good. It no, I good. honestly I agree with him. I um I was dropping it in the uh, Facebook group chats, a few. Uh, I I was like, you know what? Like I could I um I completely agreed with Darren. I was like, I can see this Jordan Clarkson role with um and Malik because it it takes so much pressure off. Because we were talking about this last episode. It, um, when we have all four of our big our big four in the game, it's hard to get hard that for score. everyone to get their. It's hard for everyone to get their piece of the pie. Yeah, so if you put Malik with that second unit, it just it honestly looks so much better because he he probably had one of his better first halves of the whole year. Yeah, he, he could not he he really did not miss. Like that was the uh the consensus for Malik in the first half is he was five for six, twelve points. I mean, that's that's all you can ask. That's all you can ask from him. Um and but he, yeah, Big Mac Big Mac in the starting lineup too. That was just you have a lot of height. You have six ten Big Mac, you have six nine vando and you have seven foot cat like that's a lot of height we we were not getting out rebounded which was good and we were playing good defense so yeah so that's that's kind of the starting lineup i can see for the future of this team i can see um i can see i can see delo anthony edwards big mac oh gosh well let's hold that thought so if any of you guys have been a fan of um of the YouTube channel, and you guys are in the comments. Uh, usually, the most pinned comment that we have is Gregory Weasley. This guy has been a fan of the channel since day one, um, and we reached out to him. We said, "Hey, Greg, can you come on the show? Let's just let's hear your face, he, hear your voice." He said, "I'm not going to do a face reveal, but I will talk." And here he is, guys. Greg Weasley, the moderator of the comment section. Let's give it up for him. Hey, Peyton and Chris, good to hear from you guys. How we doing? Uh, you know, we're doing having well, a day. man. We're having a day. So, uh, what did you think of the game last night, Gregory? You know, I thought it was one of the ones that uh, kind of got away from me at the end. You think they could win that game the whole time, but then that bounce doesn't go in on that Edward shot, and then kind of when I got to overtime, I kind of figured, you know, this one's kind of over. I feel like they didn't win it in the in the, uh, the regular session. They weren't going to get it done. That's kind of what happened. So, uh, who is your favorite Timberwolf, Greg? Well, actually, last year it was uh, Juancho, but I'm kind of done with him now. I'm kind of done with Juancho. <laughs> I feel like he's kind of just lost a step or something after the COVID. But uh, now probably – I don't know, I know Peyton. Like, I feel like Vando. I don't know. Something about, like Vando's, Vando? something about Vando's energy, I think, is just something I really enjoy watching. I love that take. I mean, Peyton, he, you said you were going to get a Vanderbilt jersey at one point. Yeah, I say I say I get a New Jersey every time. Now I'm I'm stuck on the Edward. I think I'm gonna get an Edwards jersey here soon. That would be a good one for sure. Greg, didn't you? Weren't you mentioning for your birthday? Maybe you wanted a one of the uh, Ant Man jersey. Well, I'm definitely thinking about it. Definitely thinking about it. But uh, let's see if I can uh, get the funds for it. Yeah. So Greg, so Greg, being the moderator of our comment section, um, who are some of your favorite? Uh, companions that usually pop up in the comments let's do a little shout out game because oh. we do have a few guys that are always out there there's definitely some for sure but uh, i think that the the cake's got to go to king physique i love that guy <laughs> king physique king. yeah he always shows up nice and early and just with the positivity we just love to see that it keeps us going notification Absolutely. gang Nobody gang 
definitely, <laughs> definitely. So, Greg, um, you know, we got a couple really, really, really tough games coming up. We got to play the Raptors again. We have Ooh. to play the Milwaukee Bucks again. Oy. Um and I think the Clippers at some point, and we get a Lamelo Ball Anthony Edwards matchup again on March on yeah March third. So, what are your what are your schedule predictions? Do we do we take down one any one of these big teams? I think we get one. That's the Greg prediction. I think we get one. Maybe Greg, a Bucks win. Come on. I think so. I, I, I boys, it's just without. Without D'Lo, I know Rubio's playing well, but without D'Lo, I just think it's going to be tough. I think this team needs a little bit more time, work out the kinks. But I think we can. St- I think we can steal one. I know it's a bit of a pessimistic take, but uh, I think we can take one. Give me Milwaukee. I think we got Milwaukee. They're kind of on a, a having a rough spout right now without a holiday. So I think I'm going to take Milwaukee. Greg, I mean, yeah, I, I agree. I, I agree. I, I mean, there's nothing wrong with saying we're only going to get one game. I mean, we're seven and twenty-two. That means we we win one out of every four games. So. I'm saying we're going to go on a little a win streak at some point, right? You got to give us one win streak here, here or there. You just, yeah, I think they got to win back to back games at some point. At some point, we can't go the whole rest of the season without a win streak. Like we, every single win, we're like, all right, here's the win streak, and then nope. You like we say, we say one step forward, two steps back. Let's take yeah, two steps kind of t- forward and then let's four do it. Steps back. Why not, eh? <laughs> hey, Greg, <laughs> thanks for calling in today, man. Love hearing you on the show. Uh, Keep up the great work in the comment section, and we'll definitely have you on again. Absolutely. Love it. Thank you, Basketball Boys. Appreciate you for having me on. See you, man. See you, Greg. See you, boys. Greg doesn't want to leave. It looks all there. He man, is. What, a, what, a, what a colorful person. What a, what a colorful character from that man. <laughs> Seriously, um, he's done a great job. We, uh, we always love hear, having him in the comment section. We actually – we've never met the guy before um, we started the channel, and he uh, – we gave him the moderator badge. I don't even know how he got just, it, but just out of trust, just out of trust, I think we gave him. It. We he just seemed seemed like a really genuine guy, and now we're uh, we're kind of just we love talking. We talk to Greg every single day. You know, he he helps give some feedback to the channel, and we've never yeah. seen his face though. I I, I do want to see his face one day. Maybe we'll do a, a subscriber meetup. But um, I guess to go back on the take, what I was saying earlier is I see down the future, maybe next year, I see the starting lineup being D'Lo. Anthony Edwards, Big Mac, and then a big whatever power forward we decide to get in the offseason, and then Cat. And then you got Malik coming off the bench. Boom. Okay. I, I, I can see that. I can see that. Maybe a defensive four would be like my, maybe Vando. I mean, there's, no, nothing, there's no, no, nothing wrong with no, Vando. No, no, no. Not Vando. No? No, Vando's a bench player. We need to get someone better. If we're, if we're going to be that NBA Finals contending team that me and you uh, – that me Strive and you for. We we got to get a big name. Not I mean a big name. Just kind of like, kind of like a guy who would thrive on the Pacers. We need a player like that. Like a um, I don't know. Like Sabonis is too good, obviously, to be that player. But I, I get what you're saying. I, I really do. Okay, question though. So this right. is kind of a big topic that's been coming up in Timberwolves media as of late. Um, is this now? Anthony Edwards team do we build around Anthony Edwards or is this still Carl Anthony Towns team give me your honest opinion all right first of all guys um, this is big this is a big uh, this 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 is like this is almost like Timberwolves politics like you're on one side or or another all right let's just let me let me get resituated here because this is a topic I feel very very strongly about first of all half the people that are saying let's build around Ant about a week ago, you could look in the Timberwolves comment section and they would say, let's draft LaMelo. Yeah. Agreed. So you have to look – to get a real answer for this question, you have to look for people that have been on the Anthony Edwards bandwagon from the start. People that, so I feel like we are like some of the only people eligible to even give a, a comment on this. That's kind of where I was getting, Chris, because I've – anyone who has a basketball mind – could see from the moment Anthony Edwards stepped on the court that that kid is going to be special. Yeah. And it's just the people that make me so angry are the people that don't understand that and just like are so easy to jump and like they watch House of Highlights and only see LaMelo and they just don't. House of LaMelo. House of LaMelo, House of Zion. They don't have any patience. Like you got to give these kids a chance. And now that we're finally giving Anthony um, the like he finally has time to get settled. He is looking like the future of the team. But does that mean you have to give up on Cat? No. 
you can build around two players. They're not the same position. Anthony Edwards is a point guard. Cat is a center. You can build around two players. There's nothing wrong with that. That is the problem with the Timberwolves is that we always think we have to build around one guy. Why not build around two guys? Every good team has three great players. Or why not an untouchable? I think you, so I think this is the, the formula you have to go by. You have to have two, two all-stars and then you have a third guy, like a Ray, like this is like a Celtics configuration. You have a Ray Allen. And I think Malik is kind of like that, that X factor Ray Allen. Obviously I'm not calling Malik Beasley Ray Allen by any means, but if you have cat and ant, you know, if the D'Lo thing doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But then you have Malik. Malik is that X factor guy that can either come off the bench or start. So, I mean, y- you give Cat and Ant some defense and let them just take the reins. I don't know. I don't know what can happen. I think yeah. there's endless possibilities. It's just people are so quick to jump to conclusions. Anthony Edwards has one good game. Oh, let's build around Anthony Edwards. But, like, look at Cat last night. Did you see what was his final stat line? 30, 10, like, six assists. Like, guys, Cat does this, like, when he's, he's healthy, still... when he's healthy, Cat does that every single night. I I still firmly believe, in my opinion, that Cat is the best player on this team right now, and there's no doubt in my mind we should not trade Cat. He loves Minnesota. Um, we love him. Cat, Cat, we love him. Cat needs to stay. But what I'm saying is, and what we're kind of saying is, Anthony Edwards could be just as good as Cat or better. Like it, it's yeah. it's Dwayne Wade even said, I think the kid's going to be better than me. Like, but don't we want that? Yeah, we we, we <laughs> want the, we want the issue of too many people trying to score the the basketball. Don't we want like, too we many want good players? Like, I just feel like there shouldn't be like, oh, we're gonna build around Anthony Edwards now. Let's get rid of Cat and build around Anthony Edwards. I guess at some point, if it all works out, Cat's gonna retire and we're still gonna have Anthony Edwards. So at some point, yeah, we're gonna have a life without Cat, but. I don't see that happening for a long Guys, time. Cat is 25 years old too. He's, he's so young. He's gonna be playing for another 10 to 15 years. Like he he's not even in his prime yet. Keep in mind. So this team is gonna be very good in the coming years. And I know right now it does not look like it, but we have all the talent in the world. On, like guys, we have four we have four 20 point per game scores on our team right now. We just have to figure out how to put these pieces together, or how to trade these pieces to get more pieces. It's we have the assets to do that. So it's it's gonna it be a time. fun future. It's gonna if take time, were, but it's gonna be fun. Building a team up from the bottom, it takes time. And you saw it with the Warriors. Like the Warriors, it's kind of like it's just kind of how you gotta look at life too. Like same with YouTube, same with all this stuff. When you see someone that is like a like they blow up or whatever, just out of nowhere, like an artist, like a, a rapper or something. When they blow up out of nowhere, like it might seem to you that they blow up, but there's so many like years of just working and like getting better and having no one notice you. Like that is the same thing for NBA teams. Like it doesn't like, it might seem like the Warriors blew up and like they were just the best team out of nowhere, but they were, that rebuild took years. It took drafting the right guys. It took failures. Like it happens. Like it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen in one year. It's guys, going to really happen. The, yeah, the biggest the biggest example of this, and like they're the best team in the East right now at the moment, is is the Sixers guys. Like, remember how brutal in like 2013 they were when they had Michael Carter Williams as a rookie, and like just you knew no one on that team. And then they turned, they drafted Joel, they drafted Ben Simmons, um, they picked up some great free agents. Like, it, look at this team. Look at their team right now. They're on. They're the best defensive team in the NBA. They found Seth Curry to stretch the floor. They're going to be a dark horse finals contender. It's, it it's takes time. Process. It's a slow process. And what I, one thing I want to just leave here is um, when you try to rush the process and you try to get that quick fix, you end up screwing yourself in the long run and pushing yourself back. And an example of that <laughs> is Jimmy Butler. <laughs> Jimmy, I love Jimmy, but that move was just kind of like, it was the fans were getting too, too uneasy, too impatient, and they just had to make a quick move, and they ended up screwing us in the long run. And, you know, we, we let go of uh, Lori Marketing and Zach Levine, who are both – Zach Levine's putting up incredible numbers right now, and I, we I love Zach Levine, so I was, like, heartbroken when that trade happened because we knew he was going to be a really good player. So, I don't know. You, you kind of just – you wonder what this team would look like right now, I guess, if we kind of just kept the same Flip Saunders rhythm of – building up i mean you never know yeah but i mean but this is the thing too so wiggins in his 
second or third year was averaging 23 points per game and he was playing good defense. And then, you know, tragically flipped past Tibbs came in and he declined heavily. And I think that's just, I, I don't want to say we stunted his development, but he was on pace to be a guys. Like if you look at all the projections from like 2014, 2015, they all said Wiggins was going to be a top two player in the NBA. Like it was, that's how good of a prospect he was. Yeah, he was one of the best prospects in recent years. Like he was one of the most hyped up players that there's been. And I, yeah, it's just, I just really hope, man, that we don't mess up Ant. He's just, you see the joy and like the fact that people say that that kid doesn't like basketball. Man, I think he's, I like think he, he's got the dog in him, man. He loves it. I've never seen anyone like, like, I've never seen anyone have more fun during a basketball. Like, I see him like make a three and just start laughing. And I just like, that's just the best thing. Like as a fan, like that's what you want to see. Like he makes it fun. He has everything, man. He has he has the leadership qualities already. You could see he's him leading his teammates already. up. He's, he's leading. leading. Rubio. He's he gets hype after you know after the bench comes after a timeout and the bench starts coming in. He gets hype, daps them all up to the bench. He's laughing, you know. He's he's intense. Like he's for anyone who says he's just Wiggins 2.0 they they don't Watch first of all they never wa- they never watched the Timberwolves when Wiggins was drafted cuz that dude was is he's still stale today like he's he does not give any facial expressions he has no nothing wrong clear with motivation no and there's no, no i mean nothing wrong with it yeah. to each their own but Ant-Man's just got that like he's got he he has like excitement he he looks like he's having fun and that's yeah. what keeps players going yeah, and he might not have the most hype he might um Right now, he's finally getting the – it's funny how we play the Lakers once, and now now it feels like everyone's like, oh, Anthony Edwards, now he could be a rookie of the year just because of one game against LeBron. But, like, he's been doing that. He's been doing that consistently, man. You think LaMelo's mad that Anthony Edwards has been getting the the press lately? I don't know. I I really – I don't think that these guys care about it as much as – I don't think so either. I I don't think think so either. Dude, like – they're like we love Lamelo and we love Anthony Edwards. Obviously, we are now bigger Anthony Edwards fans than we are Lamelo because there's that little built-in ri- rivalry. Can't that say we that. want Anthony Edwards to do better than Lamelo. Yeah, because we we like because he's, he's on our team. What do you expect? But like, if someone were to say like, oh, down the road, Lamelo and Anthony Edwards would be the two best players in the NBA. We knew that. Them. We knew, guys. That. We predicted like, no one. <laughs> Everyone was still on the train of like this draft sucks, and we're we literally said we're like yeah, like Lamelo, Anthony Edwards, Wiseman, and we were on the Halliburton train far before too. You can check that out. But we knew they were going to be all stars. We knew they were going to be this good. Like there's there's no possible way that a draft happens with no all stars. It's never happened. Yeah, you can. Yeah, and, but it's, um, the fact is, how long until Anthony Edwards is an all star? I think that's a good little question we can end the uh, episode on how long until how so these these fans are hearing us say like just be patient like we will be a finals level team and it might like i'm saying it's going to be in the future but how long do you think in the future until we are a finals contending team because we have the potential to be that how long until anthony edwards is an all-star how long for a few of these things um it's difficult i think First of all, just going off of maybe next year, we get a fully healthy team. We upgrade, make some, make a few roster changes, minor ones, get a little bit more defense. I, and they keep the 10 seed. I think we are at least the 10 seed next year. There's no doubt in my mind. I think if our team was healthy this year, the whole year, I think we'd be in the eighth seed range right now. It's, it's like we would be a playoff team, I think, if our well, team was healthy. next year, if we add players, we should be shooting for the 10 seed? Oh, we should no. that should be the that should be the floor of what we should be shooting yeah. for next year with we, with players if we add players and these players develop like they should be i think we should be going five or six seed i think it'll be so tough, you're, you said you said our championship window right now like the good thing about the wolves is is our championship window is going to be open for a decade like we yeah. we have all our players are very young so i think once Cat gets into about 28 years old, once Delo is about 28 years old, um, once Ant gets to about 20, 24, um, and Malik, Malik's again at that 27 range, so that's about three, three, four years. That's that's when all those guys are going to be in their primes. Besides Ant, um, so I don't know. I think 
four years, you look at this team and I could see them as a top four team in the West. Well, yeah. So, and the thing is like, it's not going to happen overnight. Like we're going to have to slowly progressively have better and better seasons. So I would say like this year, you know, realistically, I don't think we're going to make the playoffs. I, I, I think it's tough now after adding those two losses, I really, I just don't see it happening, but I, I wish like I, we just can't put together a winning streak, which is really tough, but I'd say in the future, I'd say next year, I think we can build on it. Maybe, maybe win a few playoff games here and there. And then the next year, we're just going to keep getting better and better. And I think as a Wolves fan, it's just a few wins here and there. That's just going to make us excited. We've gone through so much pain here. Yeah, a lot, a lot of pain. And that, you know, that's why it's fun to see Anthony Edwards smiling around like that. And, you know, just having that motivation because it, it keeps us, you know, thinking that, all right, like we got this, he's having fun. You know, he, he believes in us. We got it. You know what it looks like, honestly, you know how Curry, like whenever Curry like hits a three, he does all the dancing and stuff. And he looks like he's having fun. Like Anthony Edwards looks like he's having just as much fun as Curry right now, which is a it's good contagious. sign. It's contagious. It really too. is. Cause you can't be having that dude gooning around on the team and not be like laughing. Like everyone else on the team's like, all right, this guy, like he's having a great time. I can have a great time. It just lightens up the whole mood. And if that's your leader, dude, that builds such a great environment. Definitely. All right. I guess, um, well, one last question. All right. Big debate now that Anthony Edwards made his little push is who's your rookie of the year at the end of the season. Well, at the end, I I think that LaMelo, I I just don't see LaMelo not getting it. I think Anthony Edwards is going to have to keep having these games he had against LeBron consistently Mm. in order for him to go ahead of LaMelo. But LaMelo's having a great season, man. He's exceeding all the expectations that were made for him. And he's getting all the press. And that's kind of like, that's how you get rookie of the year is by getting all the press. And like, ESPN dude like if LaMelo gets rookie of the year that's exactly what they wanted I think it, it's just hard it's he's really fighting an uphill battle right now Anthony Edwards is yeah I, I agree with you right now the it's it's tough too because obviously Ant-Man's leading the league in scoring and stuff but leading the it's tough because yeah yeah, yeah re, leading <laughs> the rookies but it's it's tough because LaMelo also gets to add those rebounds and assists which yep. do nothing but help you and I, and that's it's just Anthony Edwards doesn't, he can rebound. Anthony Edwards rebounds fairly well, but Anthony Edwards just doesn't need to get that many assists because he doesn't play point guard. So it's a dumb thing that a point guard would have a bigger advantage over a shooting guard, but it's just the way it works. That's the way stats work. And um, yeah, I'm not taking anything away from LaMelo because I mean, all the analysts said what they kept bringing up his 20 for 80 uh, three pointers in Australia and shooting almost 40% right now. So can't say much. You can't. And I mean, it's okay. It's okay. If he doesn't win rookie of the year this year, Anthony, you know what? He's having a great season, great progression. And he's, he's looking bright, man. He's looking very bright, but um, Hey, hopefully next time we come on, we're, uh, we're a little bit, we got a few wins actually. We can just talk about that instead of trying to be so optimistic after two straight losses, but I don't yeah. know, I'm liking what I'm seeing. I'm still, I'm still all in on this Wolves team. I, I, the playoffs might be a little harder now, but, um, you know, again, thanks for Greg. Thanks to Greg for coming on. What an appearance by that guy. Yeah. What a, what a guy to say the least. Maybe we'll have him on another time, but for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys. Yeah. Thank you guys for tuning in.